Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to this hands-on with Max on character creation workshop. We are on part five. My name is Ellie. I'm a trainer at Maxon and I'm joined once again by a very special guest, Joe Herman. How's it going, Joe? Hey Ellie, nice to see you again. Welcome everybody. Nice to see you yeah, I nice see to see everyone in the chat already. We have Burns, we have Hannah, Marcelo, Jay oh, from Wembley for the football, uh, Diores from Mauritius. Hey Greg, Yulia. Miles, it's good to see you all. I, I'm loving yep. the fact we get regular faces who have been here uh, since week one. It's really nice to have you all here That's with us. That's great. And Mauritius, where is Mauritius? Do you know where Mauritius is? I don't. Maybe... I know it's a very beautiful island. Uh, a friend of mine has been on holiday and it's one of those places where when you see like a photograph, I'm like, that can't be a real place. because it just Next to Madagascar. Fun. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got you. I sort of know where that is. It's off the coast of Africa, I think. So, very that nice. Sounds incredible. Oh, I see. Yes, on the Indian Ocean, on the east side of the African continent. Awesome. Well, maybe we can do some beautiful. training there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so good. yeah, let's dive into what we're going to be doing. We're going to do so a little bit of quick housekeeping, then we'll hand out over to Joe to dive into what we're going to be doing today. So if you're new, uh, hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us. The Thank idea you. behind this workshop is to help you learn to design and rig a character ready for animation in as little as six weeks. This is the a brief course overview. So as we can see, we've got six different parts and we're actually already on part five. I can't believe that. Also, happy February, everyone. Happy 1st of Feb. Happy new month. So as you can see, part one, sculpting a cartoon character. We went into ZBrush. Uh, we then went into part two, which is where we were in Cinema 4D. We're preparing and converting the character. We then unwrapped and textured that in part three. And then in part four, we also went into some texturing again in more detail. And then we also looked at adding some hair to, to the character. And so don't worry if you ever missed any of those, or if you want to rewatch some of them, then all you have to do is head over to the Maxon Training Team YouTube channel, and you'll be able to find them under the hands-on playlist. Also, there is a handout section inside of GoToWebinar, which has a course guide PDF, which has all of this information in uh, a lot more detail, including some useful links. So some quick extra things. Sessions are being recorded and get uploaded on the Max on Training Team YouTube channel. Shout out to Dr. Sassy because he timestamps everything for us, which is amazing. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Sassy. Also, Joe has been kind enough to be putting together some project files and assets for you all for this workshop. And those are on a Dropbox link, again, inside the handout section of GoToWebinar. And you can use that stuff. It's, it's yours to have forever to keep. So enjoy breaking it down and playing with it. Also, I know a bunch of you have been taking advantage of this next sort of extra extra thing. And that's if you don't have a Maxon license, then don't worry, because we are extending the full trial of Maxon 1 until the end of February, so the end of this month. All you need to do is email me at training at maxon.net, put the title, hashtag how Maxon, or just my name or something so I can so I can find it. And importantly, you do need to have a Maxon account and you do need to have activated your trial. You can do all that within the Maxon app and then just let me know and I can do that for you. We love seeing your work. And I know a lot of you have been already taking advantage of sort of uh, showing us the stuff you've been created throughout this workshop on Instagram, Twitter, all the, all the socials. Uh, if you want to do that, just use the hashtag, hashtag HowMaxon, and feel free to follow both myself and Joe on socials. Our stuff is there at Joe Herman Artist or at It Was Ellie. And also follow Joe on YouTube. He's doing a lot of amazing tutorials on there. Uh, again, all this information is in the handout section of GoToWebinar. Cool. Part five, rigging the body. So Joe, what are we doing today? Good question. So we're finally up to the point where we're going to start um, actually rigging the body. Um, and uh, there's a couple of questions. Somebody actually asked, um, well, for those of you here, uh, you may or may not have seen my other course that I did not too long ago called uh, Intro to Rigging, and uh, which talked about some basic rigging concepts as well as some more advanced rigging concepts. 
And in that course, we did rig a, a, a character uh, using the um, the advanced the character object using a template called the advanced um, biped character, and uh, that is a great rig actually. Um, it was um, I see Ellie's looking it up right there, but um, that is a great rig. It's uh, it, it comes with Cinema 4D, and it's got a lot of things, a lot of um, uh, different. Uh, um, abilities in that rig to do many different things like you know squash things with your toes and you know all kinds of of of, of it's got all ik fk ik all all that type of stuff um we're going to talk about by the way some concepts like fk and ik but if you don't know too much about what fk is what ik is what a joint is you know um I suggest, you know, I would recommend you looking at the first course to get a, a thorough grounding in rigging, um, uh, because we're gonna we're gonna talk about it in this course as well. But but we really sort of picked it apart in that course and unpacked it much more uh, in depth. Um, so now for this character, we're not going to use the advanced biped rig. We're going to be using the uh something called the mixamo control rig and it's actually also a uh a new um i mean it's also a very capable rig even for animation uh because it has full ik controls but the benefit of the mixamo control rig is that you can use it to ap to apply uh motion capture to the rig in an easy way you can actually apply motion capture to the other rig as well, but it's a lot less easy because you have to create a special character definition for it, and it's much more difficult. By using the Mixamo control rig, uh, it's actually a lot easier to apply motion capture data to your rig. And the fact that it also has IK controls and FK controls built into the rig is that you could add like another layer of animation to the motion capture, which makes it extremely powerful. So somebody asked in the beginning of the course about motion capture. So, and the way that it works is like this. When you're creating a character and you're animating a character, you have three choices. You could either um, animate it by hand, which is like the art of animation. And by doing that, you know, if, for those of you who are interested in animation, you know, there are certain principles that were developed actually a long time ago at the Walt Disney Corporation by, you know, the quote unquote nine old men, things like anticipation and follow through and, you know, different types of um, techniques because really animation in the classic sense uh, is about exaggeration and it's about expression, okay? So, um, the th and you don't really get that too much in motion capture. Uh, in the same way, motion capture captures the human body as it naturally moves. Uh, and unless you're a really good actor where you're over emphasizing different things, you know, you're not really, um, it's not really animation. I remember when the first Pixar movies would come out, there'd be a little thing. I don't know if you remember this, Ellie, but at the end, I don't know if they still do it. At the end, they would put a thing like no motion capture used, you know, in this film because it was kind of like cheating. You know, but the thing is, is that um, so so the thing is, is that, you know, if you're an animator, you may not use motion capture at all. You might want to just hand animate your rigs and get, uh, you know, uh, um, a thing, uh, you know, a, a, a look to it. Um, but keep in mind that animation is is not an easy thing and it takes years for you to get like, you know, or it takes doesn't take years, but it takes a while for you to, you know, get something that works good. It's very detailed work, but it's certainly, if you ever look at some sort of pipelines at from the top studios in the world, you'll see that, you know, they'll do one, they'll do a block out of the animation and then they'll refine it a little bit, you know, and then they'll go through a second pass. First, they'll storyboard the whole thing and you know, and then they'll do another pass. They'll keep refining it and refining it till they get exactly the performance they want. 
and and that is the art of animation and there's some great books about that i think that one of it was called the illusion of life and it was uh written you know if you about and there's a lot of about disney in that and the you know even going back to the 2d ways and of course if you watch pixar films or um you know high-end stuff you can you know watch it and study how they animate the characters and how the characters move there's a whole art to that the second way to animate is use motion capture now if you're doing something like you know type um avatar or something like that those are like quote unquote animated movies that rely heavily on motion capture because um they uh they're meant to look real those characters you know it's not you're not doing anything like you know um, i'm sure that there's some hand animation that goes involved in that as well but if you look at at the behind the scenes stuff you'll see all the actors wearing you know motion capture suits and uh then also facial capture devices and stuff like that um and that's also another way to do it and um and that's the second path you can go on and then the third path you can go on is kind of like a mixture between the two where you have motion capture but you're adding hand animation on top of the motion capture you know and then you're sort of using both at the same time so so what i would suggest <clears throat> is that if you're planning to do animation okay like hand animation uh you could probably one of the best rigs in there um is the uh advanced biped rig it's a great rig you could use that and you could make a version of your character that uses that there's actually another rig in there it's called the tune rig right and it's really meant to get really stretchy crazy type of animation like you know like that your hands stretch out and they become like elastic and all kinds of things like that which you know can be useful if you really you know want to go nuts on, i mean you know really kind of make a very sort of like stylized type of thing um but however in the advanced character rig there is actually squatch and stretch as well built into that rig too i've used that rig many times i really like that rig um uh but so so to understand how so the thing is is that is that there's so you can rig with that rig and you can make a version of your character with that rig and keep it on the side when you want to hand animate everything and then when you want to use motion capture you could have a separate file with it rigged with the mixamo control rig which actually we're going to use today to rig with the mixamo control rig and then you could use that when you're using motion capture so you know you don't have to use just one or the other you could have different scenes can have different you know rigs depending on on what the scene is and what you're doing um and actually there's a third way too actually is that you can create your whole own rig from scratch you don't have to use one of these character templates in the rigging tutorial in the rigging series in the first rigging series we went into what are joints and what is ik and how to set up ik between joints you can actually build your own rig it's a lot of work but some people really love doing that they love building their own rigs and inventing you know it's kind of like making a robot and in the case of non biped things and maybe even non quadruped things but like for example let's say you're rigging you know a robot or you're rigging some kind of like alien creature or an octopus or something like that there might not be a rig template that you can rely on so you will have to build your own rig entirely from scratch from the ground up okay and that is a very involved process but it's an interesting process but luckily we don't have to do that if we're doing like biped or quadruped creatures or even birds there are templates for all of those types of creatures um, in the in cinema 4d so to sum it up we're going to be rigging with the mixamo control rig uh today um if you want to learn how to rig the advanced biped rig you can it's all in that first course and uh i highly recommend you use that rig as well there's a lot of controls on that rig uh that that you can take advantage of uh but today we're going to be rigging with the mixamo control rig and hopefully by the end of it uh, of today we can start applying some motion capture to our rig and and see it move and we can we can check that out so
Is there any questions? Let me know, Ellie. None at the moment, but shall I hand the screen over to you and then we can uh, get into it? Yes. Yeah, cool. It is coming over. There we go. Okay. So, so last time we, we, in our last class, we talked about like, for example, um, uh, you know, texturing. First, we talked about texturing this, this model. Now, by the way, these are not the, the final textures. Um, because in order for them to look good in the viewport, I just made simplified versions of all these textures and I call them VP for viewport. And really, just so you know, in case they're not looking like that for you, I just use the color map. So, um, so we can do that. Um, because sometimes if you do too much redshift stuff, in the uh, you know in the viewport it doesn't look that great. Of course it looks great in the renderer once you start rendering it, but um, I would expect that over time the Cinema 4 viewport and Redshift will be, get closer together. So some of the anomalies that happen they don't always happen, but sometimes they do. Do you have any news on that, Ellie? Is that something that that you face as well? Yeah, so yeah, like you said, it's something that's being worked on with the integration. And yeah. I think kind of, was it, was it last year, we then got like the HDRI reflections, the max on noises. Um, yeah, I think alphas now should show, I believe. Or if you're Good. working with their so capacity, it just gets better I and better. that works. Right, so all of these, yeah. like I said, all of these textures are just simply, like you noticed that I didn't put the, uh, Last class, we sort of like had like a pattern on the shirt. So they're just all that all they are is just it's just a color map going into um, into it just so that way we can look at it right in the viewport. And then we've got the hair up here, and this is obviously just a viewport, um, you know, approximation of the hair. But you know, we can turn the hair off, and we might turn the hair off actually uh, because we don't really need it when we're rigging, you know. But we might we might leave it on as well. Um, and, uh, so we're kind of like, uh, you know, ready to start reading this character. So the thing is, is that, um, is, so what happens, so I have all this character geometry in this character geo tab. These two items are parametric items. So they're, um, they don't, you notice by the way, the parametric items don't have a UV tag because they don't have UVs, because they're parametric. Only only meshes have UVs, okay? Uh, the buckle is out here because the buckle's not being subdivided, and all the other stuff is in this subdivision surface object because it's all being subdivided and smoothed, okay? And that includes the head, you know, head, cuffs, teeth, tongue, pants, shirt, hands, collar, and the belt, okay? So they're all here in this null, which is all in a subdivision surface null. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to um, make our rig. So the way to make our rig is we go to the character object, I mean, character menu. Like I said, we could build our own rig from scratch. You know, we would go to the joint tool and we, you know, start making our own joints and we could rig this thing just like, you know, like with joints uh, as it was in the other court. As we talked about some of the techniques, you know, we could go ahead and, you know, put joints in our, in our body and we could rig it. But to make a full blown character rig, it, it's, it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. It's a lot of work. So we use the character object, okay, which are like pre-made rigs. It's nothing that you can't do yourself, okay? If you got really good at rigging, you could make some of these rigs yourself. But these are just made for you already by really high end. As a matter of fact, I know the guy 
who created these rigs and he's i think now he's like doing um he's like a td at disney doing really high-end rigs over there so these are like professional really good rigs but so we're going to create a character object by choosing that and there's our you know character object right here and the first thing that we do okay so you've got basics coordinates objects display so we're going to need object tag the first thing we're going to do is what kind of rig we're going to create so as we mentioned before um we could create like uh, a uh an advanced biped rig which is the rig that we used before and it's a great rig and i highly recommend that you use it especially if you're not planning to use motion capture okay there's also advanced quad for uh, other things. There's also a bird. There's a car rig here. So if you want to rig cars, okay, there's a face rig, though I never use that rig. Um, there's a fish rig, an insect rig, and there's something called a Mixamo control rig. And this is what we're going to use today. We're going to use the Mixamo control rig. Okay. Now, by the way, for those of you who don't know what Mixamo is, it's kind of like this online website where you could actually, full of different motion picture files, like if you want a character dancing the Roomba, you know, you could do that. Or if you want to have your character, you know, um, I don't know, you know, like, like stalking or sneaking or whatever it's just a bunch of different things and you could actually upload this character this exact character you could upload it to their system and it will auto rig it okay for you and then you can bring that back in and you'll have kind of a rigged character that's not bad it's not a bad rig okay uh however um you know you, we want to learn how to rig ourselves because you know, it's an important skill, but you can actually get Mixamo to do the rigging for you. But sometimes, especially in complex characters, it doesn't really work that well, okay? I mean, in certain shoulder areas or or whatever. But but in many cases, you can, you know, if you're doing something when the camera's far away and whatever, you can use that auto rigging in Mixamo and bring it back into Cinema 4D with the motion capture. That's fine as well. But we're gonna use this Mixamo control rig. So, as soon oops as soon as we did that you'll see that you know the character rig we we you know we see it we get a little um thing on the ground here right here okay and now we're starting to getting ready to build our mixamo control rig so we're going to create the root okay there the root is being created okay we're going to create the pelvis okay so as you can see, the pelvis has controls on it. It has like controls for the pelvis. It has the controls for the spine joints. It has a control for the neck, okay? And it has a control for the head, okay? So once we have, and you'll see that you have the pelvis component up here. So once we've got the pelvis made, with the pelvis selected, we can make arms and legs. So a, a quick little shortcut is if you hold down the control key and you click the arms, Okay, it creates the arms. I'm gonna hide our character for a minute so we can see what's being made here. So it created the arms as well as certain controls for the arms, okay? And then what we're going to do is we are going to create, um, now the thing is is that I may or may not want to rig the hands right now because actually, if you look in the other course, I've, I rigged the whole hand and you can see how to rig a hand, but it kind of takes a lot of time. Well, not that much time, but even, I mean, we only have two hours and even like 20 minutes is a lot of time. So, but whatever, I'll make the hands. So uh, the left and right arm <clears throat> are selected. So I'll just click hand. And so it creates hands and you can see that there are the bones for the hands. And, uh, I'm going to go back to the pelvis and I'm going to hold down the the uh, control key again and I'm going to create the legs. Okay. So there we have our rig, which is called the Mixamo control rig, and it's kind of like ready to go. Okay. So 
<clears throat> what we're going to do is the next step in rigging this character is we are going to go ahead and we are going to show, first of all, our geometry again, okay? And we'll go to like a front view, okay? Because obviously this rig is not lined up with the character, okay? The arms are too high, things are in the wrong position, okay? So what I'm going to do is we're gonna go from the, um, the build command, the build uh, tab right here, and we're gonna go into our adjust tab, okay? So once we're in our adjust tab, you notice you get these little dots, and you're supposed to put these little dots where the joints are supposed to be, okay? So um, now the way that it works actually is if I were to click on like a joint, like let's say the pelvis, right? Oh, by the way, you must be in the object like I'm clicking on the pelvis here and I'm nothing's happening so you have to be in the object mode okay so if I click on the pelvis you notice that I get you know I get a um a translate thing you know here you know or if I click rotation I get the rotation but so if I click on the pelvis like that okay let's go back to the front view okay if I move the pelvis up and down notice the whole rig moves because it's kind of hierarchic, hierarchical for example if i move the elbow around you see just the elbows move but these are kind of linked to the um hierarchically so you know we spoke about hierarchies as well so this is actually what what happens if you want to move the pelvis and you don't want to move the arms right like i'm going to take that pelvis here i'm going to move it but i don't want to move the arms does anybody know how to do that? Does anybody know how I can move the pelvis without, or let's Just say the spine it. over here. Let's say I'm going to move, take the spine. See, it moves everything. Hannah says number seven, seven K. Exactly. Number seven. Right. So very good, Hannah. Extra credit for you. So we're going to click the seven key, right? So now you can see I could just move that just one joint. Okay. So. What I'm gonna do, first of all, is I'm gonna click on the pelvis and I'm gonna move the pelvis right here, right into that center line of the character, okay? Then I'm gonna click what's called the spine joint and I'm gonna move that right, right here. That's good, right there. Let's go up a little bit. Let's click this one and we're gonna move this one, I believe we're gonna move this one right here. Okay, right there. Then, now, by the way, like I said, this rig looks a lot, looks, has a lot of similarities to the advanced biped rig, but there are some differences as well, but they're also very similar. So once you get good at rigging one of these templates, you can, you know, it's the same idea. They both have this adjustment process. So I'm gonna bring this one down over here, and these are named differently, because this is called spine two. I believe in the advanced biped rig, it's called, it's called chest, okay? So it doesn't really matter. It's just that we're using a different rig, okay? So now this is over here. This is called like the shoulder, uh, the right shoulder. And you notice if I move one, um, the other one moves. So I'm just gonna move this like to about right around here. You can think of this almost as like a collarbone, okay? If you want, I'll just move it there for there. Depending on what your character is or depending on what your style is, or depending on how you want this thing to move and deform, you might want to bring this in a little bit. You might want to bring this out a little bit because these are, you know, it depends on how how you want your character to move. But I'm going to move it right there, okay? And then this one is called the right arm. It's not. It's it, this. It, that's not what it's called in the other rig, but that's okay because we're not using the other rig. Okay. So we're going to move that to be right about there, okay? And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna move this right about right here, okay? And then we're gonna take this with the end of it right here and we're gonna move this right here on the arm, okay? So now, and then this one, the neck, we're gonna put it right on the bottom of the neck, which is 
Oops. Now, by the way, if this happens, you look, I'm clicking on this and I click, I go to the arrow to move it up. And then I start moving the other joint, right? And that's because this arrow is on top of the other joint. Just go to like the line and then you can move it. Okay. And then you can go to this one. And then right now, you see this kind of ring around the neck right here? Let me go to the thing. Actually, let me show my lines. Okay. See this little like ring around the neck right there? That's where I want the head to bend. Okay. So, um, so that's why I'm going to put it right there, right in the middle of that. And then for the top of the head, I will move this up. Now, the thing is, is that I'll move that up to right here. Now, you notice that this ring here, because by the way, in this character, this is a stylized character. Like this character, this head is about four times or five times the size that anybody's head should really be. A head really should maybe come up to like, the bottom of the nose or something so but the thing is so i'll move that up to there doesn't matter and but this should have moved with it and i'm going to tell you how to fix things like that okay which you could also make these other things smaller or bigger or whatever but um but you could fix that now now comes for the feet so for the feet i'm going to take this i mean for the legs so for the legs i'm going to take this and i'm going to move this down to right about here because this is where I want the leg to start bending. If you want to have the leg to start bending here, you could do that too, okay? There's nothing that says that the leg should start bending here, okay? It might be funnier if it bends here, okay? But I'm gonna bend it. You can also bend it. You're gonna put it here too if you want, okay? It's up to you. But I'm gonna bend it right on the line here. You don't have to stick to these lines. You can put it here or here, but I'm gonna stick it right here because I sort of like, if you look at like, you know, like a human torso, well, not a torso, really. If you look around the pelvic region of a human, you'll see that, you know, the crotch is lower than sort of where the hips are. So we'll put that over to about right there. Then we'll take this and we'll move this up to be sort of like, now here, here we go, look at this. If I'm moving this up, oh, well, that's fine. Can move that up to there. Like I said, if I didn't want to move the feet while I move this stuff, okay, I could uh, hold down the seven key and then it moves it without moving the feet. Okay, but we're going to go ahead, we're going to move the feet up to here. Okay, and then now it's going to be easier if I switch to a side view to do the feet. To do the feet. So if I switch to a side view, You'll notice that I've been doing them in the X view, but I haven't been paying any attention to where they sit on the Z. You know, I've been doing X and Y, but I haven't been doing Z. So once again, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these things to sort of where they should be on the Z axis. All right, so there we go. Put this there. Okay, put this, I'm just gonna put them right along their center line, okay? Here's sort of like where the neck is gonna go, so we're gonna put it like right here. You know, you don't have to be exact with these things. Also, by the way, during the rigging process, this is kind of an important point, you might find some flaws in your model. Like you might wanna move things backwards or forwards, and, and so you can just go back and you could fix that. You know, it's sort of an organic process. You know, we're doing it in steps, but really, you know, you kind of do some texturing, you do some rigging, you go back, do some texturing, do some more rigging, go back to the modeling phase, go back to the rigging phase. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a, it's fluid like that. So we'll bring that the the um, the the uh, neck, the bending of the neck, right around there. Okay, and that's fine. The head, you know. That's fine for the head, okay? And now we're gonna do the legs. Now, in, 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 in rigs in general, and certainly in the Mixamo control rig, it's good to actually bring the knees a little forward. Because sometimes when you make a rig, the knees can bend backwards. And the way you prevent that is by moving 
this a little forwards. Okay. So um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this part and we're going to bring this to sort of where the ankle rotates and the ankle rotates kind of like right here where the ankle rotates. And then what we're going to do is where do the toes rotate and the toes rotate right around here. Okay. And then the front of the toes go right about right there. Like that. You can actually make this flat if you want. It's odd that. Okay. Um, so then we're almost done, but we're going to switch to a top view. Okay, we're going to switch to a top view to do the arms. Okay. So the way that it works is that we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this shoulder, okay, and we're going to drag it forward, like maybe right around here, okay, and then it's hard to see what's going on, so we're going to hide the head. We're going to hide the hair temporarily. Oops, where's the hair? Here it is. Okay, maybe we'll hide the pants. Okay, and we'll hide the shoes too. So that's a little bit clearer what's going on here. So we'll take this, this is sort of like where the shoulders are. We'll move that forward, It'll be right around here. Okay, and then we are going to click on the shoulder drag that sort of like now just like the knees it's better don't don't especially don't drag it like that okay sort of like drag it a little bit back just a little bit we'll do it and for the hands we're going to sort of put this right you know where the wrist is which is going to be right around here now i might decide to do uh, to do the whole hands right now like I said, I did rig the hands hands in the other course, but let's see how much time we have, because I might decide not to um, to do all the fingers on this just simply because uh, so we can get to what we're doing. But we might come back and do it later. So let me show the parts that I hid. Okay. So now I've got this sort of like adjust, adjusted. There's a little thing reminding you, your knees should bend forward. We've already done that, so you could ignore that. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go, we went from the build, okay? We went to the adjust. You can always move back and forth between these things. And now we're going to go to the binding tab, okay? So we're going to click on the binding tag. And by the way, in the character object, depending on what you're doing, okay, it, it shows you different things. Like when you're in the adjust mode, you only see the components. But when you're in the binding mode, you see act you actually see the the hierarchy of the joints and the controllers. Okay. So, you know, it depends sort of what you're doing. Uh, but right now we're in our binding tags tag and what we're going to do is there's several ways to do this really okay but um and maybe the manual way might be better but it would take a long time to explain but it might be better because it'll be cleaner but we're just going to do it the easy way is we're going to select everything that we want bound all of these, you don't have to click the subdivision surface, all of these meshes, because these are all just a bunch of polygon meshes here, okay? And as well as the buckle. And I'm not gonna do the eyes right now, because they're not meshes, okay? They're spheres, okay? And then I'm going to alt click on the character object, so all those things are now selected. And I'm going to go to the character menu and I'm going to choose bind. Okay, so now these are all bound together. 
and actually, um, and so a few things happened. First of all, everything got what's called a skin tag or a skin deformer, which is really, you don't have to know much about the skin deformer except that it's telling this mesh that, hey, you're a piece of skin now, or you're, you're gonna be a, uh, uh, an object that's going to deform, uh, you know, along with a, a skeleton. That's what all those skin deformers are saying. The other thing is that each one of these things got a weight tag, okay? And in the weight tag, it stores all the joints in the rig that you want. You could actually, for example, to be honest with you, in the head joint, you don't need the shoulder joints in here. So you could delete them if you want, but we're just gonna leave everything in there, okay? Uh, so that's what, and the weight tag stores the weights, of the character in the, in the weight tag. Okay, and and that's so now what we're what so now that we bound this, we actually it actually came along with what is called um, automatic weights. Okay, and actually, if I turn off the subdivision surface, by the way, before I do that, the main tool that's used when you're waiting is in the character object, it is the weight manager, okay? So if I bring up the weight manager here, that's, you're gonna need that. We're gonna use that in a minute, okay? As a matter of fact, usually with the weight manager, you have this command selected in the joints. And in the joints, you're gonna be able to see all the joints for each object that you're waiting, okay? In this case, it's all the same, so the, the joints don't change, but they could change. But anyway, so this is like the setup that you would do when you're waiting. You got the weight manager out, okay? Now, if I select the head, and if I turn off the subdivision surface, you can actually see an indication. And I go to points mode. By the way, you have to be in points mode when you wait. Actually, no, that's not true. You could be in the other mode, but you can't be in object mode. Yeah. So you can see that actually most of this stuff is being weighted to the head. Like, for example, if I were to find the head in this whole thing, here it is, head. It's kind of this orange color. You can see that all of this is weighted kind of like to that orange color. Okay. But if I were to select the shirt, for example, see there's different kind of weighting going on. There's some red and stuff in there. So the thing is that what happens is that when you bind it the automatic way to the to the met to the uh, character object, there's an auto weighting that happens already. I'm going to actually show you what that auto weighting looks like. If I click on the character object and I switch from the binding tab to the animate tab, okay, you'll notice that that you have to be in the object mode for animation to work. You notice that it's actually kind of like weighted. You know, the, the, that's weighted. You know, this is weighted. Uh oh, the feet are bending backwards. Okay, so we need to go back to the adjust tab. Okay, let's go back to the adjust tab. Let's go to the side view. That's odd because I really thought that I put it in front enough. So let's go back to the knee. Okay, let's hold down the seven key so we don't mess anything up with the knee. Let's move it forward even a little bit more. And if you want, you can go back to the model and move, you know, you can make the, the knee bend a little bit in the geometry. Okay, which is something you might want to do. If you're going to start bending this, this line, you might, because it's best to have these joints sort of in the center of the mass. So if you want, you can go back to like the, the knee, for example, and you could you know, fix that. But we're gonna go go back to the um, animate tab. Let's see if that fixed it. Yeah, so now the knee is bending in the right way. So that's how you fix that problem. So it's be so so as you can see there's there's some auto weighting going on already in the character. Okay. Oh by the way we didn't fix the eyes yet but we're gonna fix that later. Okay. So So, um, so you might say, oh, okay, so why, why do we even have to, why do we even 
hate this thing? You know, why do we even wait, wait it, you know, to the to the rig? You know, it's it's our job is done here. We can go out and uh, you know go to the lake or something. And the reason is is that because the auto waiting doesn't do such a good job. Okay, so like I said, by the way, this is the um, the unsubdivided um, uh, mesh. You know, if if you press this, then it's smooth. So that's if you're wondering why it looks funny, it's because the subdivision is off. Because for some reason you can't see the color waiting. You can wait with the subdivision on, but you won't see the colors. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to weight this by hand. So so it's like, well, why? You know, it's already auto-weighted. Why do we have to go and weight it by hand? And it's because the auto-weighting doesn't do such a great job. It's like, for example, if you were to, you know, get a Roomba or something like uh, one of those like robot, you know, vacuum cleaners, like he might do kind of a good job, but he's not going to get every corner or whatever. You need to get the most control. You have to walk around with like a broom and a vacuum or whatever, and you have to do it yourself. Okay. So what we're going to do, let's make all of these things smaller. Okay. I mean, let's, let's collapse that. We don't need to see the skin tags. And as a matter of fact, to be honest with you, we can actually just have one skin tag on the top of the thing and to get rid of all the skin tags. Okay. We, you know, you could do that. I mean, that, and that's usually what you do actually, but I'll just will let everything have a skin tag. It's fine. So the thing is, is that what we want to do now is I'm going to hide everything but the head. Okay. So now we've got the head and I'm going to go back to the character object here. And I'm going to go back to the binding tab because we're binding right now. Okay. And then I'm going to go sort of like to the to the um, side view. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the points mode. And I'm going to go click on the head. And I'm going to select all of these points. This is this is the first way we're going to learn how to rig. Okay, because there's several ways that we can do this. And then we're going to select all of these points. Okay on that we're going to click the head which is this bone right here okay and we're going to click apply selected now if i move over oh before i do actually it's fine these are all you know these are all actually weighted to the head if i were to see if i were to move over any of these joints here like like this i'm just going to go to perspective view it tells me that this is the number the 421 that's that means it's 0.421 okay and it's being weighted a hundred percent to the head bind joint okay so all of these are going to be weighted to the head bind joint okay now what about the neck? Well, like I said, a lot of this a lot of this information is is covered much more in depth in the other rigging course. Okay, but the thing is, is that if I were to select, go ahead now, and if I were to select this uh, row of points, okay, like that, and if I were to select two joints here, head and the neck right and if i were to i'm going to zero them out first oh did that zero out everything yeah it did okay Either. so i'm going to select both of those okay with this at absolute and if i hit apply selected because they were two things selected right because there were two joints selected it weighted 50 percent to one joint and 50 percent to the other joint Okay, so now this is weighted to two joints. And then I'm going to select these ones over here. Now I can actually um, I can actually uh, weight those to the neck. That's fine. Okay. But instead I'm going to weight it to this bone, this joint here, okay, which is the spine two. Because I don't want it to move. It's going to be like glued down to the top of the body. 
So I'm going to apply that, apply selected. Okay, so you can see that now those are weighted 100% to that joint, right? So now what happens is that if I were to um, go to the animate mode, animate, I'll turn on my subdivision surface, okay? And um, now, first of all, I don't see the controller for the head, okay? So if I go to like the left mode, because it's somewhere in the head, in the body, that's kind of like a little, a little bug or something, and I need to report that. I don't know if if uh, if these guys are aware of it or not, but um, this should have moved to the top of the head. But that's no problem because I could just move it myself. So maybe I don't even need to report it. And the way you move these or make them smaller, the controllers, is you simply go to the. Um, uh, let me see here. I think it's the bind now. Maybe it's the adjust. Maybe it's in the build. You go to the build area and you go and you find, or maybe it's in the animate area. If you find out, I think it's, it's I'm just going to type in head. And uh, there, there, the head controller. That's it right there. And I'm in point mode. Okay. If I was in, Object mode, this wouldn't work. I have to be in point mode. Okay, and then I'm going to select all those points. Okay, and I'm simply going to drag them to the top of the head. Just a spline. That's all it is. It's just a spline. Okay, but by dragging the points and not the object, you're leaving the origin where it's supposed to be, which is down here. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the object mode. Okay, and now I can select that. Controller like this. Oops. See, I select that controller. So now the thing is, if I chose the rotation tool, so now I can start, you know, rotating. You see where it's bending right now? It's bending right where I wanted it to bend. And these joints are being weighted to, these points are being weighted to two joints. Okay. So um, now, but of course, you can see that the heads. The head, I mean, the eyes are not moving with the body, okay? And that's a problem, okay? And um, the, th the reason is, is that, um, and the thing is that, does anybody know a way that I can get the eyes to move with the body? Aside from weighting the eyes, because I can't weight the eyes. The eyes can't be weighted Miles because says, make a null. Nope. Hannah says constraint. Exactly. Very good, Hannah. Two in a row. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so yes, so we can go to the eyes, right? You can right click on the eyes under rigging tags. We can choose a constraint. Okay. So we're gonna make one there. Actually, I, I should have made both at the same time, but that's okay. We'll make one. At a time, there's our constraints, right? And we're just going to make a simple parent constraint. So we're going to choose both of these. Same time, we're going to make a parent constraint. We're going to go to the parent tag. Okay, we're going to choose a little pick whip. We're going to click on this head controller. Okay, so let's see if they both, yeah, they're both there. So now these things are parented to this head controller. So now if I Move this head can his head now, like now the eyes are moving with the head. Okay. And actually, um, I forgot to do something by the way. The um the uh, tongue and the teeth. Okay. I actually wanted to take the tongue, go to the point mode. They're all selected. Okay, oops. Tongue. Okay. Hold on a second. Tongue. Okay. So now all the tongue points are selected. We're going to choose the head. We're going to apply that. So they all get selected to the head. And we're going to do the same thing with the teeth. Head. Apply selected. 
100% absolute to the T. And then there we have it. So we've got, by the way, who here has seen the rigging course? I know Hannah, you were there, right? Was anybody else there? Okay, so now, by the way, you see now the teeth and the um, and and the was in, anybody else there, uh, Ellie? Yeah, so Rune and uh, yeah, Hannah was saying yeah, it's fantastic. Cool. Marcelo so now, yeah, as well. Yeah, very good, very good. So now the teeth and the tongue are also moving along with everything. Okay, so now, so now the head is weighted. Okay, and now we're gonna we'll do the collar. The collar is also really easy. We just click on the collar, go to the point mode, select all the points. Okay, and we're gonna weight that to the spine too. The uh, this joint. Okay, apply selected. So now that's weighted. Okay, you can double check by checking it. So now comes the shirt. The shirt's a little bit harder now. So we're going to choose the shirt and the shirt, oops, let me make this a little bit smaller. We don't need that it that big. Okay. There's a lot more going on with the shirt. I'm going to hide the collar. Okay. And I might as well just hide the head as well. And that looks a little creepy, but we'll leave it there. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to or maybe we'll hide because i don't want anybody to have nightmares we'll hide the uh that so we got the, we got the shirt so rather than doing the way that we've been doing which is by selecting points like this and then choosing this apply selected absolute we're going to choose a very important tool um, called the uh, first of all, this is the character menu. I'm going to rip it off right here. Okay, let me put it over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose a very important tool. It's called the weight tool. Okay, and I'm going to take off the subdivision surface. That's the weighting. By the way, I'm going to select all the points on this right now. I just select all and I'm going to zero them all out okay so there's no weighting on any of these points see it's zero percent on all of the points I threw away the auto weighting is basically what I just did okay now the weight tool is a really interesting tool okay because it lets you paint the weights but aside from just being able to paint the weights okay it lets you to paint the weights symmetrically now you might say, well, hey, wait a minute, how can you paint symmetrically? Because these points, for example, on this arm, they have symmetrical points, but they don't get weighted to the same joint. They get weighted to this other joint, okay? So it's a little bit tricky, okay? And the way that, you, that the system, that Cinema 4D handles that kind of symmetry is that if you go in the symmetry tab over here, okay? Actually, let me let me get rid of this for a second. Go to the symmetry. Tab. First of all, you enable symmetry. Now, if you look at all of these jo these joints here, let's say for the leg, okay, they start like the right up leg underscore bind, and then it's co it's it's sort of partner or a complementary joint on the other side is called left up leg underscore bind. So the name of the joint is exactly the same on either side, except for one thing. One starts with the word right, and one starts with the word left. Now, on the advanced character biped rig, it's a little bit different. Each, each one starts with an R underscore, and then the left one starts with the L underscore. It doesn't matter. It's the same idea. They're named exactly the same, except for the um the uh the word right and the word left so what we're going to do is we're just going to type that in right here in the symmetry options of the of the weight tool we're going to say the left ones 
have the word left in it, okay? And the right ones have the word right in it. So you might be asking yourself, well, why did they do it that way? Why didn't they, they keep doing it the same way of, as the um, as the uh, as the uh, advanced character biped rig? Why didn't they just keep the R underscore left underscore or L underscore? And the reason is because this is the way Mixomo probably does it. So this is a Mixomo control rig. So this is the way they're doing it. But it doesn't matter because it works the same way. Okay. And then you choose the app, the mirror. Okay, so we're mirroring on the on the YZ plane. So in other words, think of the mirror, you know, standing like whatever. Um, well, anyway, just think of a mirror from one side to the other. If you want to mirror a different angle, you could do it like that. So now, watch what happens. I'm going to take the weight tool. Now, the thing about the weight tool is that its strength is different than this strength. Okay. If I make this 50, 45%, this strength stays to 100. So don't think you can change the strength of the weight tool here. You can't. Okay. You have to change the strength, change the strength of the weight weight tool here. Absolute, same as here, absolute, right? So watch what happens. I'm going to take these points right here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag over them like this. Oops, now here's a problem. I just weighted these to every single joint in the whole rig, and they're all being distributed at 1.54%. Why? Why did this get distributed to every single joint on the rig? Does anybody know the answer? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the answer is, is because I didn't Hannah select. said you didn't select them. Very good, three in a row. I'm keeping track, Hannah. Very good. So because I didn't select the bone that I want to wait to. So I'm going to undo that. The bone I want to wait to is this one, the, the uh, right arm bind. Okay, now I'm going to select these. Okay, now you see I'm, select, I'm doing 100%. See, 100% over here. 100% to the right arm bind like that okay so now that gets 100 now but here's here's the magic of it let's go to this side what are these points weighted to let's hold down they're weighted 100 percent to the left arm bind see the magic see so basically the magic is is that i only have to wait one half of the character I don't have to wait one half and then go back and wait in the other hand. This especially comes in handy when you're doing something complex like hands. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. So we're going to quickly go ahead and we're going to wait these bones here. Okay, and these over here. Okay, if I want, I can take take turn visible off. Okay, now to do the shoulder, actually, I'm just going to, you know, do what I did before. I'm going to select. The right arm bind and the right forearm bind, and then drag it um, and drag this. Okay, and now they're 50% on each, like we did with the neck. Okay, now by the way, this is going to give us like a little bit of some um, deformation, like some squishing on the deformation. In the first course, we talked about the concept of what's called a, a fan bone which helps with that type of thing, which helps with uh, like squishing at the joints. And uh, I'd probably want to do that with this too, um, uh, is add a fan joint, but for right fan joint, so that way I won't get like a weird squishing on, on these joints, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay, but that's certainly something that I can do to help this joint out later. And I can extend this rig because that's, you could add things to your rig, even if they're even if you're using a template like this one, you could extend it. For example, let's say your character has, you know, a little, I don't know, like little robot thing or something here. You could actually add to your rig. But anyway, we're going to go ahead to the right forearm bind. OK, and we're going to go ahead and do that. As a matter of fact, if I take off visible only, then I then I then I don't have to go to the back side. I can just do it like that. 
backside gets made automatically. But be careful with this, because if you're take off the visible only, sometimes you're doing the head, and then you'll uh, you'll mess up the uh, other side. Now, in this case, um, for the shoulder, okay. So I want to choose the right shoulder bind and the right arm bind. These two joints, and I want to rig. I want to do exactly the same thing as I did with the uh, with the um, elbow. And now these are doing it at 50 and 50. See that? They're at 50 and 50. Okay. So now this this arm is rigged. I mean, the arm is rigged. Yeah. I mean, the arm is weighted. And the beautiful thing is, is that so is this part. Okay. So I didn't have to do it twice. Okay, so that's what's very powerful about the weight tool is you can get symmetry. Okay, now the, these points on the top over here, okay, on the top of the um, character, I pro I want to go to, to the spine two, which is this one, and I want to weight all of these. Okay, now here's actually here's something else about the weight tool that's really intelligent. Okay, there's only one joint here in the spine. So I so but the symmetry is smart enough to know that if you choose a spine that doesn't have the word left and right in front of it, watch what it does. I select this joint, this point, and it weighted this point, that symmetrical thing, to the same joint. Okay, so it's really smart in that way. I can only I I still only have to do half, even if there's one bone. See, or I could go around the whole thing. It's up to you. So the thing is, is that these over here. I also want to wait to those same to that same joint now and then on the back too okay and on these okay so now those are all weighted to that spine two joint now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead to um, this one we're going to say spine two and spine one we're going to go ahead and do those okay and then those get weighted 50 percent to each one of those bones I hope that this is clear. Is there any questions so far about what we're doing right here? Um, so from Mohammed, he was wondering how how did you proceed for the mesh handling? For the mesh handling. What I don't know what, what you mean by the mesh handling. Mohammed, if you can let us know what that's referring to, we can we can find out. And we had a quick question, slightly off topic from Rune earlier. And they were wondering, let's say you have a scenario. One character artist has finished the structure or the rig. Animator wants to start animating while the first person then finishes the texturing and the other details. In that case, would you use XREF or is there a better way to share a character when multiple people are working on it? That's probably the best way is that you can, um, you know, you can get it. But 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 the thing is, if you're planning if, the, for texturing, for sure. But if you're planning to, um, you know, um, modify the mesh itself, you don't want to start rigging until the mesh is locked down. But yes, for the texturing. You know, you could start doing other things, lighting, texturing, you know, definitely um, you would do it in an X-Rep. And an X-Rep is, is, is a character. That's a, that's a very good question. And an X-Rep, we haven't really uh, spoke about it too much, but um, the X-Rep is, is an external reference to an external Cinema 4D file that um, people can use. So the animators can already start animating with the X-Rep while the um, texture artists and stuff can keep working on its textures and stuff while the animator is using the X-Rep, so yes. So now for this bottom row over here, okay, I just wanna rig this to the hips, which is right this joint right here, okay? So we're just gonna go 100% to the hips. So as you can see, it's 100% to the hips, 50, these weights are all 50-50, up the spine, okay? These weights are 100, and then now the whole shirt is rigged, okay? So you can see that this whole shirt has now become rigged, okay? 
So now, if I were to bring back the head, let's say, and then, you know, um, and then the collar, okay, and uh, I'll put my subdivision surfaces on, and I'll go back to the object mode, right? So now you can see that, that you know, right now we're in IK for the hands. Oops, now here, there's a problem. Okay. That obviously this point was not weighted correctly. So we're going to go back to the um, point mode. Let's choose the shirt. Now I can actually check the weighting without getting rid of the subdivision shirt. You can see that right here that this, this point is weighted at zero. Okay. So I forgot to weight this one point. So the question is, I'm going to take my weight tool, okay, and I'm going to go to the left. That should go. That should be at the left forearm, right? Left forearm bind. So we're going to go ahead to the left um, right arm, left forearm bind, and at 100%, we're going to go boom. Now it's weighted, and then the, it's weighted. Oh, okay. So it didn't do a symmetry, and I wonder why. But okay, maybe. Hmm, that's odd. Should have done the symmetry. Oh, maybe it did. Well, let me go to the right forearm bind. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we can see here that, you know, you might want to test your rig out like I'm doing because you can make, you, you make mistakes when you're rigging. Okay. So now this is rigged, right? And like, by the way, you can change the rig from um, uh, IK to FK. So watch, I go over all the way to IK. And so now this is an IK arm. I mean, an FK arm. Okay, see that? Now it's FK, it's not IK anymore. Okay, so, um, you know, everything is just working the right way. Okay. By the way, these joints here, they like lift the shoulders. See, that lifts the whole shoulder up. Okay. Whereas this joint just rotates the shoulder, doesn't lift it. Okay, and then this joint here, you know, this is the neck, but you should uh, be careful about rotating the neck. This is for the spine, the top spine. Okay, and then this is for the middle spine. And then that's for the and then that's this is for the the uh, that spine like that. Okay, so now the shirt's done. Okay, so um, now let's let's do the belt. The belt's kind of easy. Okay, let's see what time is it? It's already one fourteen. Okay, so now the thing is is that we're going to go to the belt. All right. And we're going to go to the point mode, select all the points. Okay. Oops. Belt. Okay. We'll just select it this way because on this thing, I have visible only off. See, if I had visible only on and selected some of these things, the ones in the back, oh, they get selected anyway. That's weird. Okay. Who knows? Anyway, whatever. So. Let's we'll select all the points here. We're going to weight that to the hips. And I don't need the weight tool on this one because it's it's not, you know, anything special. I mean symmetrical. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the buckle. Take the buckle. Okay. Select this. And uh, weight those to the hips. 
And now I'm going to do, now I'm going to do the pants. Pants are going to be a little harder to do. Okay. And the way that they're going to be done is, so let's talk about the pants for a minute. So let's, let's get rid of this, all this stuff, except for the pants. Okay. And so here's how we're going to do the pants. So first of all, this top line here, we're going to weight that to the hips, 100%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, oh, I'm in the binding, I'm in the animate mode, and you can actually bind in the animate mode. Okay, but we're gonna, we really should be in the binding mode so we could see the joints. So, you know, you can just keep that in mind. Actually, it's be, you should really be binding in the binding mode of the character object, not in the animate mode. It should be animating in the animate mode. I forgot to switch it back when I was testing the, 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 the weighting. Okay, but you can see that all the weighting that we did do, like for example, this stuff, um, did get bound correctly so you can conceivably bind in the animation mode but we want to be able to see the joints so this is how we're going to do it. we're going to go to like a front view okay and this is how we're going to do it i'm going to go to the point mode of the the pants okay and we're going to select we're going to we're going to turn off the subdivision surface we're going to select these points and we're going to weight them 50 percent to the hip and 50% to the upper leg. So we're gonna choose the hips, okay? And we're gonna alt click the right up leg, okay? And we're gonna hit, oh, now here's the thing. I wanna use the weight tool. Why do I wanna use the weight tool? Because, actually before I get started on anything, I wanna zero out all the weights. How come it didn't zero it out on the other side? Zero. There we go. So now I'm going to choose the weight tool. Okay, that's odd. We still have weighting here. Oh, okay. There we go. I didn't select all the bones. Okay. So now there's no weights at all on this pants. Okay. So now the thing is that the reason I want to use the weight tool is because these are symmetrical with these joints and they have different bones. So no problem, we choose the weight tool. We still have that symmetry set up like we set up before. And I'm going to go ahead to the options 100%. I'm going to choose the hips and the right up leg and I'm going to start painting and notice that I'm painting symmetrically the weights. See that? So all of these weights here get painted on the other side. So these are to the hips to the right up leg. These are the hips to the left up leg. Okay. And also um, these, by the way, I zeroed them out before. These should be all weighted 100% to the hips. As should, um, as should these, I guess. Yeah. Or if you want, you could actually weight these 100% to the hips and 25% to each leg. So how would we do that? Well, they're weighted 100% to the hips already, okay? So if I change this to 25% on the weight tool, and then if I choose the right up leg and the left up leg and paint it, look what I have. I have 50% on the hips, and 25% on each on the right up and left up leg. Okay, so that's also an option. Although I think it would have looked fine. Now look, I forgot a point here. This should go 100% to the hips. Bring this back to 100%. 100%, 50-25-25. So then there we go. So now these, let about right here, these over here, these should go 100% to the right up leg. So we're gonna go ahead, go around here. That like that. So should these. 
I'm going to take a visible only here. And I'm just going to go ahead and do all these like that. And then I'm going to click the right up leg and right leg. Okay. And do these so they get weighted 50 50. Then the right leg. Okay. We're just going to go ahead down to the bottom here. So hopefully that's good. Now the pants are done. Let's quickly do the shoes. Okay. So with the shoes, uh, we're going to say, first of all, we're going to zero everything out. So there's no waiting. Okay. And we're going to choose the right leg and we're going to weight these bones, these points to it. And these get weighted to the left leg okay then we're going to choose the foot which is this thing and we're going to weight all of these to the foot now here's what you want might want to be careful about doing um with the weight tool to do visible only because you know you could be over there you might get some on the other foot so you can actually just be a little bit more careful when it comes to these things over here so we'll do those to the foot We'll do these to the foot, okay? We'll select the foot and the toe base, and we'll do these 50-50 on each of these, okay? And then we'll go ahead to the toe base, and we'll do the rest of them on there. And the last thing that we'll do for the, for the, uh, oops, I forgot one, and I forgot this one too. Okay, so the last thing that we'll do for here is that these on the bottom should actually all be weighted to the foot. These should all be weighted to the foot, okay? And these should go 50-50 between the leg and the foot. So I choose the leg and the foot, and I just go 50-50 on each of these. These are to the foot, okay, like that. Like that. So, so now what happens, for example, if I, um, so now this thing is actually weighted for the, 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 the pants and the foot, because the thing is, when the toe bends, you want this part to be flexible. And similarly, with the, when the heel bends, this part gets a little flexible. So, we're going to bring in our pants back. Okay. We'll bring back our shirt, okay? And we'll bring back, oh, what about the cuffs? Okay. The cuffs. And simply, we'll just select all the points on this side. And we'll, we'll rig it to the right arm right forearm bind 100 percent okay and then we'll select these and we'll put these on the left left forearm bind 100 percent so now the cuffs are now when it comes to the hands like i said i don't want to we don't have time to really spend too much time on the hands okay so all i'm going to do for the hands is I'm going to, where are the hands? There they are. Let me bring the belt up. Did I do the belt buckle? I think I did, yeah. Teeth, tongue, everything's there. Okay, so for the hands. So let me hide the shirt. Let me hide the cuffs. For now. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hands and I'm going to just choose these and I'm going to rig those to the left forearm bind. Actually, let me get the weight tool. And let me select all the points of the hand. And let me zero everything. Oh, actually, let me select all of these. Let me click on these, first of all. And I'm going to zero everything. Okay. And now I'm just going to choose 
the right arm forearm bind and I'm going to go ahead. Why did I want to choose the weight tool? Because I know in my heart of hearts that it's happening on the other side. I don't have to worry about going and having to do it later on the other side. Now, the ones at the wrist, because the hands are going to bend at this point, okay? So this ring around the wrist has to be weighted 50% to this and 50% to the hand. So I'm going to select both of these, right? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, see, I'm going to write, wait, wait on 50% on this ring around the wrist, okay? And then for now, like I said, I don't want to do the hands right now because it's going to take too long. And for those of you who are really, we might do it in the future because actually motion capture data comes with hand animation, finger animation, okay? So the thing is, is that, oops, I missed some. Look at that, let's go to here. So we should rig the hands, okay? And we might at some point rig the hands, but here I just want to do it to the right hand bind. And actually you really need to do it with the weight tool. Did I do these with the weight tool? We got to check on the other side. I got to make sure I did those with the weight tool, and I did. Okay. So the thing is, is that actually we need to do this with the weight tool. So we're going to take off visible only, and we're just going to go ahead and weight this whole thing to the, to just to the hand, so that they're all weighted to the hand. Okay. Like I said, it's you want, even if you're doing motion capture, certainly if you're animating, you need to rig the hand. Uh, but, um, and we might get back to that at some point. So now, more or less, the character is weighted. Okay? So, you know, he's weighted in every way that if you wanted to have them sort of like hunched over a little bit, looking dejected. Maybe he's sad, you know, poor guy. You can have him lean over. Or if you want him to, um, lean backwards like if he is laughing or something you could do that then you can take this now these are ik so usually you leave the well there's reasons why you would have ik feet and fk feet and we spoke about a to a lo, lo, large you know um extent about what the difference between ik and fk is but like, for example, um, you know, you can sort of like, you know, actually, I, I actually, you know, you could put his hands on his belly and whatever like that, and you could just start animating him. You could animate him at like, for example, you know, dancing to the music or going like that, or, you know, maybe nodding. And, uh, Maybe, for example, you want them sort of to have like, what do they call those things? Like, for example, when you shift your weight, like you can have him shift his weight on one foot, right? You know, sort of take this thing, rotate it out to the side, maybe bring this out. And don't forget that you have these. This, is, this points the knee, okay? Because if you were like to take this foot here, right? and rotate it all the way over here, but the knee is still pointing forward, that would look funny. So you would take this, okay, and move it to the left, so this way the knee is sort of pointing where the foot is, okay? And maybe, for example, you wanna take the hips, oh, the buckle's not showing. Might wanna take the hips, Rotate these a little bit 
So he's having more weight on one leg and then put these, put this, oops, back up. And this arm is already in F, F, FK, but you know, you can sort of have the, uh, Or maybe, for example, you might want to have his arm kind of like waving, you know, a little bit like. Grab him look up a little bit. This can come forward a little bit. This can be rotated. I actually need to work on the hands a little bit so that way, you know, and then so on and so forth. So now, and then you could animate that. Similar to the advanced character rig, but I will say that the advanced character rig has like a lot, that, like for example, there's things called like, th there's a little sliders that lets the head follow the, the twist, I mean, follow the chest and have the heads follow the chest. There are some controls in this rig, like I said, you know, by the way, this would let you hunch the shoulders, like if he's, you know, you might want to have him be like, I don't know, you know, and hunch his shoulders. That's what you would use these things come in good. Or if he's reaching for something, you can rotate the shoulders. Those are very useful. So let me just do one thing, because I want to make this hand back to FK. Okay, so now that hand is back on FK. Okay, and then as you can see, the hand bends from where we wanted it to bend, but there's no rigging going on in the hand right now, because I'm trying to save some time here. Okay, but the hands were rigged, or every finger was rigged in the other thing. So actually, why? Okay, his, his legs are still there. We go. Okay, now we're back to where we were with the hands set to F I K. So this character is rigged, rigged, ready for either animation. Although, like I'm saying, if you really want to just do animation, I think you're better off with the advanced character rig. But if this is ready for animation, if you want to animate it with the Mixamo control rig, and it's also ready for motion capture, and it's ready for a hybrid of the two. So now we're going to look a little bit on, on that aspect. Are there any questions so far? Yes, we have had a couple. So first off, from Rune. Joe has previously recommended keeping the character mesh low poly to ease the weighting. If you're in a situation where you need to use a high poly mesh, do you spend the month waiting or would you make a low poly version, rig that and use something like a mesh deformer to apply the animation of the rig to the high poly version? That's a great idea. You could definitely do that. Um, but what I would suggest is that um, you could all, you know, you could also rig a, a fairly dense mesh. Too dense, you don't want to bother because then it's too much work. Okay, like for example, you would never rig a sculpt. You know, it's just too dense. And then once it starts getting too dense, and also if the edge flow is not right, you notice that, you know, we spoke about edge flow and topology in 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 the earlier parts of this class. And the thing is, is that um, is you'll notice that every every edge that is being uh, you know attention has been paid to every edge so that like for example these you know you might say that there are certain rules about edge flow like for example um, you know in other words if this wouldn't deform right if these edges were like diagonal or if they were all broken let's say an edge ended somewhere and another one began it just wouldn't deform right and it would look weird okay certainly it's important in the face for facial expressions which we haven't really spoken about yet but it's 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 important throughout the whole model like for example take a look at 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 the um at the uh at the way that this is you know, going, doing its thing, okay? It's, um, it's, it's, 
you know, deforming based on the edge flow is an important design consideration. Now, if you're not planning to animate a character or deform it, the edge flow doesn't matter, okay? Like if it's just a prop sitting on a shelf or something, the edge flow doesn't matter. But for animation, the edge flow matters. Now, if you have dense polygons, you could still rig it, but you need proper edge, you still need proper edge flow, okay? Because if you don't have the edge flow, then and you have a dense mesh forget about it you're gonna you, you you're gonna it's not gonna, never gonna look good so that so the answer really is that um is yes you can you just have to spend more time and there are things like for example you see this thing over here smooth you can actually use that to smooth out weighting you, you put that on when you start painting like even the weight tool Okay, you have smooth. So, for example, you could paint over a bunch of joints and smooth out their weights. Okay, so, um, and now in, in the case of something like, let's say you have a really high density robot, right? But he's made out of like, he's made out of like parts that don't really deform, you know? Let's say he's got like a ball joint and he's got like the forearm is like really intricate, full of polygons you know thing but that's never going to deform that's always going to stay one piece that's easy to to weight because you're not smoothing out the weights you're not distributing the weights it's never you do you know what i mean it's never um you know what i mean ellie i do so like it's never it's never going to bend or anything yeah, it's the just, way you explain things no, is is very very good very clear a lot of people have said this. yeah it's, it, it, it's never going to be um uh bending or deforming any way it's just going to be attached to like one bone so in that case make it as dense as you want but once you're going to start getting to organic you know modeling that where the the character is going to like bend and deform and stuff like that then it matters you have to have good edge flow you don't want it too dense even if it's a little dense that's fine you could you could smooth it out and stuff like that once it gets too dense Gonna be too much, but the edge flow is really important. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, so from Ahmed, I've got a problem. If I have, if I rig the face and import Mixamo, everything disappears. How can I solve that? Say that again. If I've rigged the face and import Mixamo, everything disappears. How do I solve that? Well, that's a tough question because it shouldn't really if you have that. But you know what? Talking about that, let's um, let's um, let's move on to like motion capture right now because um, whether it's Mixamo or something else, because I want to show you something. And then at the end, I'll read through the comments one time quickly um just in case um we skipped over everything right but during it right now we'll uh we'll um ellie's the one with the eyes on the comments but um okay did you know that okay so now we're done waiting so i'm going to hide this weight manager we don't need it anymore okay we're done waiting this character okay so we've got maybe i'll show the hair again okay so we have put the hair back on our on our model and remember this is just viewport here you know to get to see how the hair is really going to look we'd have to render it in redshift like we did in the last class so the question now becomes like um so basically what we want to do is did you know that cinema 4d has a whole motion capture library in in it and so does mixamo okay and so does many other motion capture libraries exist out there that you can buy or that you can use. So, you know, um, you can find the one that you want. But we're going to use the one in Cinema 4D. And if you go to the Asset Manager, it's here, right here under Motion Capture. And they have a model you can use, actually, if you want to, if you don't want to use your own. But we're going to want to use our own. So, and here, here's some of the ones that they have. They've got some clapping and cheering okay dying 
Okay, jumping. Let's let's start with the jumping one. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to bring in this like this jump. Okay, so we double click it, and we're gonna hide our character. Let's hide all this stuff right here, and let's just take a look at what this thing looks like, what the motion capture looks like. So it looks like this, like that. Little happy little jump there. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get this motion capture onto our character. Okay. And the question then becomes is that how do we do that? How do we get this motion capture onto our character? Because we got our motion capture and then we've got our character. And they're two different things. Okay. And the way to do this now actually this is actually kind of an advanced type of a thing i wasn't really planning at first to do it um and actually i wasn't even really planning to use the mixamo control rig actually but uh in this class i was just going to do it with the advanced biped rig again but i thought to myself well you know we already did do the advanced biped rig in that other course so why don't we use the Mixamo control rig? And then I thought to myself, well, if we're gonna use the Mixamo control rig, why don't we bring in some motion capture into it as well? But it's kind of like a topic for another day because motion capture is like a kind of a huge thing, but we'll do it anyway here a little bit. Um, so we've got, um, and maybe we'll take that up some other time, you know, motion motion capture, we'll take that up, what it is and how to really use it and how to blend motion capture clips one into another and stuff like that. Um, and then also, of course, animation is its own thing, but just non-motion capture animation and what are some of the tricks to do that. But the thing is, is that what we want to do, so we've got this jump here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the character object and we're going to right click it and we're going to do something called what's called a character definition tag. Okay. And that brings up this character def definition tag. Notice that, that the motion capture, okay, that came in ha also has a character definition tag. They automatically, they just put it in there. But if you're using motion capture from another third party, it might not have this probably won't have this. So you're just going to put one in just like I'm doing now, the same process. So we just put this one. As a matter of fact, I'm going to name this character. I'll call it Billy. Okay. So now I put this character definition tag onto this character. Okay. And I might, I'll call this Billy's rig, Billy rig, instead of just character. And then this is the character geo first. So this is geometry. This is the hair, which we might as well put on. This is the rig made with the character object. And then this is the motion capture that we just brought in. So what we're going to do, um, the thing is what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to, on this Billy rig, um, character definition, we're going to click this open manager. So what is this open manager? This, you know, it kind of looks intimidating and there's a lot going on here and it's like, what the heck's going on here? But basically what this is basically saying is it's telling other motion capture which joints are what, okay? So for example, for the torso, the head joint there's, see, there's nothing in here because it doesn't really know what the head joint is. So what we could actually do is we can actually go into, um, you know, I'm dragging in the wrong joint here, but I could drag in. Well, let me find the head. Okay. The head is over here. So I can tell it this is the head joint. Okay. But luckily, um, and that's not a bad way to do that. But luckily, what we're going to do is... So if you if you make your own rig, okay, you that's what you would want to do, and then you would make you would you would save your preset, 
okay? So this way, if you're bringing motion capture, it knows which joints to apply the motion capture to. Otherwise, it doesn't know, okay? You will never know, well, what, which one's the head joint? If, it's, if the head joint is called like, you know, like face, it's not gonna know, okay? So the thing is, is that's what, this is what you're doing. You're making a definition. You're making a character definition. Now, when it comes to, since we use the motion control rig, okay, we can, what we can do is we could just click this extract skeleton thing, right? And it just does it automatically, okay? Like, for example, it just does it automatically. It, 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 like if you look in head, okay, or in spine, it, it puts the spines in there automatically. So it just did the work for us. It made, did all this work for us in like one click. Okay. Now it also put the controllers in there and that, and that kind of, it doesn't really matter, but when later on, when we're gonna wanna use those controllers to like modify the motion capture, we're gonna have to do something to fix that. But that's okay, I'm not gonna worry about that now. Okay. So, so let's just, so I made a character definition tag, I opened up the manager and I extracted the skeleton from this rig. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to set a reference pose, which is this T position. Your character has to use a T pose, okay, for this for this to work. Okay, so we're gonna choose set reference pose, which it just did. Okay, so now, so that's it. We just made a character definition. I know. Listen, I this might be a little bit like dense, but you know, and I was really, wasn't really gonna show you this at all, but I decided what the heck, let's do it. So um, so now that, that the character definition is, we're gonna just create what's called create solver. And it creates this little character solver tag. So now all I have to do now, the target character is gonna be Billy, which is this character definition. And I wanna bring in the source. And the source is going to be this definition. So I'm going to take this definition and drag it into the, into the source, right? Let me hide the uh, other rig. As a matter of fact, let me actually hide the, our rig because we don't need to see the rig, okay? Let me just go to that, right? Take off the stuff. And now let's just play. And you can see now, basically, We've got the motion capture. Actually, the hair is kind of slowing it down, so I'm gonna hide the hair. We don't need to show the hair, there it goes. So there it is. So what we've done, and we can see that the character is nicely deformed based on the rigging that we did. We can see that, you know, this thing. The elbows, I probably wanna put fan joints in there, but the heads are being deformed. Now let's say we don't like this, um, motion capture right let's say we want to use like another one okay let's say we want to use um let's say well why don't we do the walking one why don't we do the waving one okay so waving for a taxi okay so we bring in the waving for a taxi and uh, I'll go back to the character solver, right? And I'll drag this character definition, I mean, into there, okay? And now, why don't we play them both at the same time? Well, no, actually, let me hide the other one. So this one kind of goes like this. Oops. It's like, hey, taxi, taxi. Oh, wait, uh-oh, okay, so obviously what's happening is that my, my stuff is not long enough. So let me make this like maybe, well, if I click on the motion capture data and I open up my, um, you can actually see the keyframes. These are, these are all keyframes here. Okay, so the thing is that let's make this like 360 or something. So it ends at right around like, 203 so we'll make it 203 so it says you know he's waving for the taxi 
And then he's like, ah, oh, shucks, didn't stop. So, you know, and there's, you know, millions of these motion clips out there. Um, obviously, there's no facial expressions going on here, but the body is kind of cool. Now, let's say, for example, let's say, let's choose another one. Let's go ahead and choose the walking. So there's one here, it's called walking loop. Okay. So we'll double click that. That bring comes in here. Okay, we'll go to the solver. We'll drag this one into the solver. Okay. And now you can see that he's walking. Now you'll notice that the rig itself went off somewhere. Okay, and the way to fix that is that we could just drag the character's rig inside the motion offset null. Okay, and now he'll walk along with that thing. Okay. Um, and then we'll hide the. Uh, so, you know, he's kind of like walking along. So, now the thing is, is that what we're going to do is um is if let me take him out of the uh motion offset and just have him sort of just walking now here's a here's what's really cool right now he's actually referencing the motion capture Ooh, what time is it okay we're almost okay he's referencing the motion capture so that means that if i were to take the motion capture out which is this one, okay? If I were to take it out, delete it, no more animation, okay? But let's say I want to bake that animation into the characters. I want to bake those keyframes into the character. So now, what I can do is I can select this rig and I can open up my timeline. And I can go to the functions and I can say bake objects. So I bake objects. I don't need to create a copy. I don't need to clean up my tracks. Okay, and I click OK. So what it's doing is it's baking that stuff. Now, if I get rid of the motion capture itself, I get rid of all of the motion capture. Okay. So now, there it is. The character's walking, and the the, key, the keyframes are baked into the thing. Now, here's the thing. I want to show my rig, right? Now, you'll notice that, let's say, for example, I want to use this rig to change the motion capture. So if I try to click on this rig, I can move it down, let's say over here, but if I press play, it kind of pops back up. And that's because actually the controllers got keyframes baked onto them. And I don't want keyframes baked onto my controllers. So, but I do want them baked onto my bones because it, the motion capture doesn't have any controllers on it. So it just baked nothing keyframes onto this so i'm just gonna i got this hips control i'm just gonna select all the keyframes on it i'm just gonna delete them okay so now now there's no keyframes on the controllers right but i still have all the motion right so now for example if i were to go ahead and if i were to take this thing and like drag it down like to here so now he's kind of crouching and walking and that is kind of like what the power of this rig is, is you can, you can actually animate the controllers on another level to the motion capture. For example, let's say I wanted him to be walking and then he kind of like raises his hand, like hello, something like that, right? So what I can do is I can go to the beginning, like I'll go back to about frame 30, right? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch the hand from IK to FK. 
because I want to FK him. Okay. And I'll click on this shoulder control. I want to get rid of all of its keyframes. And this one too. Okay. And then at around and then I want to keyframe this like shoulder and keyframe this elbow. Okay. And then at around 60, I kind of want to like take this thing right here, right? And then raise it up to here. Keyframe that. Take the shoulder, raise it up to here, kind of like that. Keyframe that. I can also keyframe this thing kind of like doing like little hello, you know, type of thing too. But I don't want to bother with that right now. Um, because we don't just, we just don't for the sake of time. And then what I'm going to do is I'll go over to about 90. I'll just drag this and I'll go over to about 120 and I'll drag this one back, you know, uh, control drag that. And same for this one. Right, so then we'll do that to there, right? So now when we play it down, and by the way, if he's, you know, if, in the beginning, it's kind of like a little bit, this one is kind of like his shoulder's a little bit too low. So I'm going to drag his shoulder up a little bit, just a little bit less, and I'll keyframe that. And if you want, you can do that. You can bring that back to the end too. Okay, so now the thing is, is that, you can, if you were to play this, it would be something like you'd be walking and then you'd be like, that's kind of slow, but he could like raise his arm up and then he could raise it down, put it back down. Like he's like, hey guys, want to hang out? Okay, like I said, it's a little bit slow, so I'd probably, you know, do this a little bit faster. still kind of slow but that whatever and then for example once he while he's doing that you know you could also like, go to the head for example over here do a little overlapping animation get rid of its keyframes because it's also a controller okay and keyframe that and then have it like at 60 maybe we take the head right and then Maybe have them look a little bit like to the side, like that. So he's kind of like walking and then he kind of puts his head to the side. And then sometime around here, we can take this one and make his head go over here. So he's, then he straightens his head out at the end. So it's kind of like a mixture between hand animation and motion capture. So you've got the motion capture doing, but you're still adding a whole level of animation above the motion cap capture. So, um, so let's see. So basically, um, are there any questions? I mean, you've answered the last ones. Uh, I don't know if you'd seen them in the chat, but a few people had asked about how you could do two animations at once. And um, Syed even said, can you have him wave whilst walking? So either right. you're a mind reader or... <laughs> <laughs> well, great minds think um, alike. Yeah. Um, and just uh, abundance of lovely comments as always rune saying oh, another you. sensational session burned uh, earlier was sharing his applause for another uh, marvelous class thanks again for another great lesson and it was funny so jim actually said uh, any tips on facial rigging and i believe that's next week's session you know right? we're, we're going to talk about that next week in all honesty 
facial rigging is is something that probably you could spend a whole you know week on you know um it there's just so much involved in it hi ellie um the thing hi. is um, yeah you know there's 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 so there's so much to it really uh and and also here's the thing as a little precursor to next week and where we're going to talk a little bit about um i'm just reading the things and uh i see some really nice comments thank you very much Jim. Jim was actually wondering, Joe, have you written any any books? So I've created Especially some tutorials. They're on my YouTube channel, Joe Herman, and I'm planning to re release some new ones. And I was actually thinking about writing, making a PDF, actually, um, you know, of tips and tricks and things like that that you don't get from the manual, you know, and stuff that's also based on the art of animation and, you know, um, uh, how to do that and, and stuff like that. And if you're interested in that um, and maybe making that available or something, you know, I, I certainly, I don't know, send me a note I or something. You, yeah. You'll have a lot of supporters here for, for that. Yeah. I think that sounds incredible. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what, I might do the PDF and, uh, and then, you know, I'll, 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 I'll let you guys know and and uh, I don't know, put it on Gumroad or something like that or whatever. But um, I've been thinking about that recently, just based on, you know, beyond just the technical, you know, the art of it and stuff like that and, and different things like that. Absolutely. I, I, I'll, I'll definitely let you know. But thank you for asking because it's been on my mind lately. Thank you. And... Um, yeah, just but a, but a as I was going to say, as a precursor things. to the next week, I was going to say that, you know, character, oh, yes. facial rigging, um, maybe in a way that's different than body rigging, because even if you have a cartoon body or like a weird body, they kind of are sort of similar. A hand is a hand, you know, but when it comes to faces, they're all really different. And so one approach is everybody has their own approach. Really, and if you start looking at tutorials or stuff about facial rigging, you'll find like, wait, wait a second, this guy didn't do it like that guy, and this is completely different than this guy, you know. So, I'm going to show you some of the tricks that I like, but it's kind of like, you know, there's one word that I would like to say about all of this stuff. It's called invention, you know, and you really, you know, it. it you really, some of it is you have to learn certain techniques and the rest is up to you, you know, to like invent your own path. There's an old saying that goes like, if the path ahead of you is clear, then then you're on somebody else's path, you know? So I just, it's something like that. And I just wanted to ex explain that when it comes to facial rigging, we're certainly gonna look at a lot of techniques, but but you might be designing a character who's like got floppy ears or like straight ears or like, you know, maybe you want some dynamics in the in, in it. You know, I mean, it's just there's just so much involved with that. So uh, I, I don't know if that makes any sense. But, it definitely uh, does. Yeah. Definitely does. But yeah. So yeah. So um, so yeah. Well, I mean, I'm seeing the comments, and thank you all about that. Um, and yeah, keep yeah. an eye on my YouTube channel, and 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 I'll also tell you here and stuff like that, or also Twitter and Instagram. And yes, I, I really have been thinking a lot about that stuff as well, just supplemental stuff to this stuff. So yeah. Everyone will be thrilled to Anything hear that. <laughs> Ellie, thank you. No, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, once again, thank you, Joe. It's like an incredible two hours and I find it, I find it just absolutely flies by as well. It doesn't feel yeah. like we're sat here for two hours. It's yeah, it's just extremely interesting. And as you can see by the comments, everyone feels yeah. the exact same way. It's incredible. Thank you. Um, yeah, and yeah. I can't believe it's the final part next week, but I'm excited. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it as yeah. always. Yeah, me too. And also, by the way, when it comes to facial animation, some people actually do facial motion capture where, you know, you put like these dots on your face and you wear like a a rig or, or you don't even have to put the dots anymore i don't think i think now you just get like a it's like an app on your iphone or something and, you know but then you have to rig your yeah. character based on that so but we're not going to really talk about that but that is something to keep in mind
definitely. Cool. Well, yeah, thanks well, again, Joe. Thanks again to everyone to for your... Yeah. Thanks again for everyone's great comments and questions. We really do appreciate it. It really makes like the workshop uh, what it is when you're all super engaged, which is lovely. Yeah. And yeah. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your Wednesdays, whether it's the morning or the evening. And then, yeah, me and Joe will see you next Wednesday, for the final part. Yep. Have a good one, everyone. See you guys and thank you. Take care now. <laughs> Bye.